it's not the size that matters, it's how you use it. Now, you've probably been pretty familiar with this phrase since it's been your plan B for as long as you can remember with plan C being actually getting laid based on having a good personality. But little do you know, it's actually applicable when it comes to strength sports as well. Hi, I'm Patrick, professional size doesn't matter enthusiast as well as a top 50 all-time power lifter. So I know a thing or two about how muscles develop in your body. When you think about professional strength athletes, you probably think of strong men, power lifters, bodybuilders, and we'll include CrossFit because they're technically strength athletes. But why do some look like your drunk uncle at the family reunion who's hitting on your female 16-year-old cousins a little too hard while the others look like Greek gods? The answer comes into a difference of training. There's hyperplasia training and hypertrophy training. Two very similar things, but have very different results. <sighs> hyperplasia aims for muscle growth, while hypertrophy aims for muscle growth. Now, that definition is about as useful as asking your girl where she wants to go for dinner, but there's a little bit of nuance in those definitions. <sighs> Hypertrophy is utilized by bodybuilders to make your muscles bigger. Hyperplasia is utilized by strong men and power lifters to make your muscles stronger. They don't necessarily go hand in hand. <sighs> Before we peel back the foreskin on that statement, Let's go over the three types of muscle fibers that you have in your body. You have three types of muscle fibers in your body. You've got white muscle fibers, red muscle fibers, and cardio muscle fibers. The cardio muscle fibers are distinctly condensed into your heart. The muscle fibers that are in your heart are different than the muscle fibers that you have in your biceps, your quads, your calves, or any other appendage that you're going to have. And to work your heart muscle fibers, since they never stop working, the only time that your heart muscle fibers, these cardio muscle fibers stop working is when you're dead. And being dead is not the best time. And the way that you work your cardio muscle fibers is by doing cardio, increasing your heart rate, and making sure that you build up endurance and tolerance to increased blood flow. Now, let's talk about those other two muscle fibers. You've got the slow twitch red muscle fibers, as well as the fast twitch white muscle fibers, which is kind of weird because white guys can't run. Yeah! The slow twitch red muscle fibers. Those are considered the endurance muscle fibers. If you look at athletes who are predominantly red muscle fiber, slow twitch muscle fiber athletes, you'll get guys like Kevin Durant or marathon runners where these muscle fibers have a very long endurance and they can keep going for a long time. <sighs> Now let's talk about the whites. White muscle fibers, also known as the fast twitch muscle fibers, can also be broken down into 2A and 2B white muscle fibers. The 2A white muscle fibers, even though it's June right now, and we're not talking about that like teachers apparently do in preschool, are called transitionary muscle fibers. These are the muscle fibers that are gonna help you increase your strength when it comes to things of 20 to 30 reps. However, 2B muscle fibers are not 2A muscle fibers. They're not these transitionary muscle fibers. These are the muscle fibers that power lifters accentuate in their training because it increases the strength of two to four rep work. So when you want raw explosive power, you're gonna favor 
training towards increasing these to be white muscle fibers. <sighs> yeah! Yeah! Now that we've discussed what muscle fibers are in your body and kind of the zone in which the RET schemes will attach, attack each muscle fiber and how to train up each muscle fiber, let's talk about how we cater towards these muscle fibers for either strength or size. Because we've already discussed a little bit of this, now you've got your thinking caps on, we're thinking 2A, we're thinking 2B, we're thinking white, we're thinking red. We're not thinking cardio, but cardio is important. Might be the most important muscle fiber you could be working on because when you work your cardio, cardio is not the ability to lose gains, as Don Mazzetti once said. Cardio is the ability, your potential to recover. So you get two equal lifters doing the same program. The lifter who does more to recover is the lifter who's going to win. So lifter who does more cardio is going to recover better and they're going to win. Or you can just go heavier and recover from your training a little bit easier so you can stroke your ego a little more. Do your damn cardio. Yeah. What was that? Ah. Now that we've discussed a little bit about that, we're talking about hypertrophy versus hyperplasia. Hypertrophy is making the muscles bigger. It doesn't increase the number of muscle fibers, the cells that create your muscle fibers. Hypertrophy doesn't create more of those. It makes them bigger. Hyper hyperplasia, on the other hand, increases the number of these cells that make up your muscle fibers. So hypertrophy makes them bigger. Hyperplasia makes more of them. So you're a lot denser. So if you're thinking like I'm thinking, you kind of got to train them both in order to get the best of both worlds. Hannah Montana. <sighs> so, hypertrophy training does not look like hyperplasia training. Hypertrophy training kind of caters more towards those 2A muscle fibers and the white muscle fibers more than it does the 2B muscle fibers. So, the bodybuilders grow their muscle cells as big as they can, but they don't necessarily make more of them. So they look big, but they don't exactly lift big. Mm. Hypertrophy training, catering to those 2A and white and uh, red muscle fibers, I may have misspoken earlier, looks more like sets of 8 to 15. These will give you a hypoxic response, getting all of, if not all, or most of the oxygen in your muscles to be expended. Because every time you contract your muscle, every time that you're using your muscles, you are expending calcium and oxygen. And when you release or let your muscles relax, you're using potassium and magnesium. So when you're doing high rep work, sets of 8, 12, 15, getting into a little bit of different training with sets of 20, 25, getting a little bit more towards the, uh, the red muscle fibers and, and cardio going on there. But doing sets of 8 to 12, which is the general area, some people even do sets of 13, but they're heathens, that will give you that hypoxic response. And the hypoxic response is feeling the burn. When you feel the burn, that means that your muscles are crying for more oxygen. Now, how does your body transport oxygen to muscles? It's through the blood flow. Your body takes in oxygen through your mouth or your nose. It gets processed into the bloodstream through your lungs, and it goes to wherever it needs to go by your bloodstream. So by getting a big pump, you are in the adaptation period to the hypoxic response. Your body is sending more blood to the muscles that are screaming for oxygen in response to your training, and that's how you get a pump. So, is hypertrophy training, bodybuilding training, those are synonymous with each other. Is that pump chasing? Yes and no. But 
to yeah it is yeah it, it pretty much is but bodybuilding training and hypertrophy training though i said they're synonymous with each other it's not quite true bodybuilding training modernized bodybuilding training because as we progress the sports of powerlifting strongman bodybuilding we do more and more research we get more and more things out of the nerds that are just looking at things rather than doing things and a lot of things from the people who are doing things and not really looking at things because they're also looking at things while they're doing things so a lot of exercise science going on here modernized bodybuilding is looking more and more like stretching under a load you want to stimulate all of your muscles that you are working in all of the ranges of motion so that you are building full looking muscles that will resemble what the human body at a peak performance will look like so there's a lot of holding at the top and then focusing on the eccentric in a lot of bodybuilding styled workouts this in increased time for the eccentric the downward motion the stretch of the movement is also aiming at that hypoxic response so they're increasing their time under tension they're increasing their hypoxic response they're getting bigger better and more reliant pumps in the gym so hypertrophy training might just look like pump chasing bodybuilding training is looking more and more like a guaranteed pump every time you're not chasing any pump tail you're getting it every time you're going to the gym and it is not easy and it hurts a bit because i mean you feel the burn every single time and you're going pretty close to failure and just playing the tip with it you're not actually going all the way ah hyperplasia training my personal favorite bread and butter hyperplasia training is the training that power lifters do and strong men do however power lifters are more autistic than strong men and they hyper focus on three main lifts and they just do it over and over again but if missionary position gets it done why change things strong men are a little more adhd they focus on all three muscle fiber types they do a lot of cardio with moving a lot of things they move it but they also have an emphasis on hyperplasia training because they're trying to be as strong as possible they don't really care how they look as long as they look good at the top of the podium am i right boys hyperplasia training is focusing on those 2b white muscle fibers those muscle fibers that are really strong between two and four reps so a lot of hyperplasia training is going to look like a four by two a four by four five by five three by two six by two seven by one a lot of training that's really low reps but really heavy it's really heavy and we can do a lot of volume with that as long as we are still targeting those 2b muscle fibers however modernized powerlifting is also extending towards those 2a muscle fibers because as we remember those 2a muscle fibers and hypertrophy training makes the muscles bigger if you have a lot of muscles and you make them bigger you get stronger who knew <laughs> So we talked a little bit about what are muscle fibers. Then we dove into specifics about those muscle fibers. And then we looked at the difference between hypertrophy training and hyperplasia training and how those incorporate each other into the sports of powerlifting, bodybuilding. And we tickled the balls of strongmen a little bit. They got the biggest balls, Atlas Stones. Look it up. But that's basically what the difference between hypertrophy training and hyperplasia training is with hypertrophy training you're aiming to make your muscles look as big as possible so if you're a bodybuilder you don't exactly care whether or not you're the strongest bodybuilder out there as long as you look like the strongest bodybuilder out there conversely on the powerlifting side you don't necessarily care whether or not you look like the strongest guy out there as long as you are the strongest guy out there so in summary which type of training is best for you are you a hyperplasia homie trying to get as strong as possible or do you want to convince yourself that you're going to get more girls 
but inevitably get more dick pics in your DMs than your girl gets in her DMs because you look like a Greek god and you've pursued bodybuilding for a long enough time and you've developed a lot of eating disorders to try and cope with the fact that the only things you eat are plain chicken, rice, and broccoli. Well, to answer that, you don't really know because what muscle fibers you have in your system, the, the red muscle fibers, the, the slow twitch, or the 2A, 2B white muscle fibers, those are predetermined in your genetics. So you won't really know which is best for you unless you try it, which also sounds like a uh, justification as to why you should suck a dick. But try out hypertrophy training. If you get really big, you really enjoy the training, that's really all that matters. If you care a little too much about what's on the bar, try some hyperplasia training and pursue powerlifting or strongman. But if that's not for you, there's nothing wrong with doing anything in the gym because making progress is better than not making progress. And the gym, the gym is the haven for all. So this has been Full Primal Power, Patrick McGuire. If you like this video, leave a like, subscribe, and share it with all the single moms in your area. I'm looking. Please. Pretty please. Anyways, have a wonderful day and do me proud and get some gains. Patty out.